UH Energy brings critical issues in energy to the university community in our annual symposium series. The first topic of the 2016-2017 series is the Clean Power Plan, to be or not to be. So where did the Clean Power Plan come from? At the 2009 Copenhagen Climate Summit, the United States supported a non-binding international target to reduce U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 2020 to approximately 17% below 2005 levels. In June of 2013, the Obama administration released the Climate Action Plan, which directed the EPA to establish standards for new and existing power plants. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, they account for roughly one-third of all domestic greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. What is the Clean Power Plan, and how is it implemented? The goal of the Clean Power Plan is to cut power sector carbon emission levels nationwide by 30 percent compared to 2005 levels by the year 2030. To achieve the nationwide goal, EPA looked at each state individually to see where emissions could be lowered. The EPA then identified three ways that existing power plants could reduce their emissions. Plants could improve efficiency. Plants could shift their power generation from high-emitting coal-fired boilers to low-emission natural gas turbines. Plant operators could shift to renewable energy technologies, such as wind or solar. Even though EPA created a plan for each state, each state can choose any strategy they like to achieve emissions reductions, including working in collaboration with other states. The EPA asked each state to submit an initial plan by September 6, 2016, and a final plan by September 6, 2018. Benefits of implementation, according to the EPA. The EPA insists that implementation of the Clean Power Plan will reduce bills and costs associated with climate change. The EPA also says premature deaths, heart attacks, asthma attacks, and missed school and work days will decrease with the reduction of particle pollution and other harmful gases when carbon emissions decrease. Criticisms and legal conflict over the Clean Power Plan. In October, and on the same day the rule was published to the Federal Register, Texas and West Virginia led 23 states in challenging the constitutionality of the Clean Power Plan, requesting an immediate halt of implementation while the lawsuit is ongoing. The states accuse the EPA of going far beyond the authority Congress granted to it by forcing states to transition their energy portfolios away from coal power. In total, 27 states oppose the rule, while 18 states have petitioned the courts in support of the rule. Despite the lawsuit, many states continue to develop compliance strategies. Meanwhile, representatives from 195 nations, including the United States, met in Paris and agreed on targets to reduce emissions globally. In January 2016, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals rejected the opposing states' demands and declined to halt the implementation of the Clean Power Plan. The states immediately appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, and on February 9, 2016, in a shocking decision, the Supreme Court voted 5-4 to four to grant a stay pending judicial review by the D.C. Circuit Court. But no matter the ultimate ruling, observers feel sure the decision will be appealed and sent to the Supreme Court for a full merit review. The future of the Clean Power Plan was further clouded by the untimely and unexpected death of Justice Scalia. Some say the lower court's decision to reject the stay indicates that the D.C. Circuit may rule in favor of the Clean Power Plan. If the states appeal the circuit's decision to the Supreme Court, some parties might seek to stall the court's review until a new justice is selected to avoid a tie vote. Because without Justice Scalia's vote, the court is evenly split, and in the case of a tie, the lower court decision prevails. In May, the D.C. Circuit Court announced that the case will be heard en banc for the 11 active judges of the court on September 27th, a move considered extremely rare at the D.C. Circuit. Meanwhile, Republican attorney generals of Texas and West Virginia continue to demand the halt of the Clean Power Plan. Since the circuit's announcement, the EBA is working to craft 
a green energy incentive that would give states early credit for certain actions to reduce emissions before the clean power plan would take effect, such as installing wind farms or energy efficiency projects in low-income communities. In mid-June, the House and Senate Appropriations Committees advanced spending bills that decreased funding for the EPA's climate change programs and initiatives. The House bill reduces EPA's overall budget and bars EPA from spending any appropriations on the Clean Power Plan. The Senate's bill keeps the EPA's budget about the same level, but instead withholds dollars from specific air and water programs that would normally fund EPA's Clean Power Plan work. In July, one of the U.S. EPA's top legal advisors said the agency has not decided whether to finalize a model rule for carbon trading that states could use under the Clean Power Plan. Join us for a panel discussion on Tuesday, September 20th, 2016, as we hear from experts on the necessity, appropriateness, and their prediction for the fate of the Clean Power Plan.